It looks like an old stone tower, and is a bit overshadowed by its neighbour, Brunel's world-famous Clifton Suspension Bridge. Well, certainly Brunel's bridge steals the show, but right next to it is this quirky little tower. So come and join me. Built as a corn mill, then converted to a snuff grinding mill, during a storm in 1777, the vanes were overdriven, the pivots caught fire, and the whole place burned down. In 1823, William West, an artist and entrepreneur with an interest in engineering and optics, rented the derelict windmill, adapted it for a family home and added an observatory with a telescope. Then he converted it to a camera obscura. A periscope of the roof focuses the view outside down onto this big white dished bowl. Now here's the concave dish. It's a bit battered, but that reflects the image from above, from the periscope. So Dave, We'll close the doors. You need a sunny day to see it at its best. People, traffic and Brunel's bridge all in perfect scale. We can see Clifton beyond the trees. St Mary Redcliffe Spire in the distance. Now we can see the chains of the bridge. They go over each pier and they're so they're holding the entire bridge in place. The, the whole roadway is suspended from those two chains. And there, on the far side, they're anchored into the ground. They go 70 feet down into the ground where they're anchored in, in cement plugs, in brick line vaults. That's the strength of the bridge, is held by that. William took a lively interest in the construction of the bridge. To reduce the cost, he argued with Brunel for using wire bundles instead of chains. 90 feet below the tower is the giant's cave. It was a hermit's cell in the Middle Ages and then home to a gang of robbers in 1804. The cave opens to the sheer rock face, but at that time it could be reached by a dangerous ledge along the face of the rocks. The robbers were captured in the end. They were frying eggs and bacon when caught. They had sent their women off along the ledge to fetch the beer. In 1837, William had this 200-foot passage dug through the limestone down to the giant's cave and installed a viewpoint for visitors. Well, the giant's cave has got an international reputation by the looks of things. We've got uh, visitors from the Philippines, here's Greece, Amanda from Canada, and some Chinese visitors have written Mandarin on the wall here. We're 250 feet above the river. It's a spectacular view, so close to the centre of a major city. And since the tunnel was dug, we have the added bonus of Brunel's bridge spanning the vista. And we can see the roadway is suspended from chains, not from those wire cables William suggested. So in the end, Brunel won. <laughs>